on that note, this next song that we're going to do, Adam's going to perform it solo because I still can't sing it without crying. I can't make it through the song. I've had four or five months with this song, and I still can't do it. I, I want to tell you, this is one of, um, I can't remember how many, six or seven songs I think I did with Possum. Not all of them are on the album, but uh, I, this was somewhere towards kind of the end, the last couple songs, I think. And I don't think that I realized that throughout the uh, writing process, I didn't realize how emotionally invested I was in each song that I was doing. I found myself you know, in uh, Jacob's shoes. <laughs> I had to really think about it. Uh, I found myself in Jacob's shoes as well as uh, the Afghan's shoes and uh, in, in a place that I don't think, especially as a songwriter, but even as just an individual, I don't think I'd ever been in that position before. And it was very uh, uh, emotional for me, but I don't think I realized how deep it really went until I did the song, and when I gave it to him, it was, I, I mean, when I played it, I, 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 I wrote it in an hour, I'll be honest. He told me the story, and I went home and uh, wrote the song in about an hour, and, and I called him, I said, come over, and he came over, and I played him the song, and I was so, I mean, I was in tears when I played the song. I couldn't hardly make it through it, and... Um, so it was a very strange feeling for me to be so emotionally invested in a, in a song and then hand that off and totally forget about it because I've got to go into the next song. Maybe I keep going, keep going, keep going because I only have a limited amount of time. So it was very weird. Um, which brings me to my next statement of I haven't really played this song all the way through <laughs> since the night that I played it with Possum that very first time. That's really the last time I actually played the song. I told him that I tried to play it a couple weeks later uh, when everything was kind of said and done, I, I tried to play it just because I enjoyed it. It was a good song. And I just couldn't do it <laughs> because I, I, my emotion wasn't in the right place, you know? It's, I've got a recording, actually. He would, he would come up with a song, and then I would record it uh, and try to transpose what, what was happening on guitar on the banjo, and it's, it didn't always come out that way. <laughs> do, do what I could. Uh, but uh, the, the end of this recording, all you could hear is both of us going <laughs> <laughs> And I went back to listen to it and we're just both sitting in his living room sobbing our heads off and, and trying to talk to each other while we're crying. Like, oh, it's so good, it's so good. <laughs> and I forgot to turn the recorder off. I was just so... <laughs> Such a state of grief and sobbing, so there's just like 10 minutes of us crying on my phone. I still got it. <laughs> I'll make this song, uh, the, the story real quick because we're, we're doing a lot of rambling. But basically, a couple of days after the Landmine Museum, the boys were like, Jacob, we gotta take you somewhere. And I was like, okay. It felt like this every day, actually. And uh, I was like, where are we going? We're like, well, we're going to a hospital. It's a special hospital. It's a, an NGO, a non-governmental organization, uh, and it's called emergency, and they only treat war wounds. So you have to be very seriously wounded to get into this place. Burns, stabs, amputated limbs, very serious stuff. So this is in the middle of Kabul, the capital city of Afghanistan. So we go to this hospital. It's got these big walls around it. There's madness everywhere. It's, it's, Kabul is like playing, driving in Kabul is like playing bumper cars with over a million people. <laughs> it's an interesting thing. So we go into this place and all of a sudden there's this real serene energy. There's beautiful flowers and grass everywhere. And, and there's Afghan men laying all over the place missing different parts of their body. But they're supporting each other, carrying each other around and so on. And it was really intense to see, but but it was good for me to see. And the kids that I were with, they spoke Dari, which was the main language that they were using in that area. And uh, they also speak very well uh, English, so they were translating a lot. We were gathering the stories of these people and how they were wounded and where they were wounded and so on. Uh, and there's this big building inside this complex. And they're like, that's the, that's the critical room. That's where all the people are that, that uh, are in serious condition. We, we wanted to go in there, and I was like, okay. 
So we go up to the door of this building and they open it. And it just, the smell of death just comes out of it immediately. It just hits me in the face. It's really intense. So we walk in this building and it's just full of, of some men are crying and some are moaning and some are laying there in silence. And I look over to my right and there's this Afghan uh, man with a big smile on his face, like ear to ear. He's got to be 50, 60 years old. It's, that's old over there. And uh, uh, he has his bandage over his abdomen and there's big red marks coming off of his side. He's Obviously, there's an infection. You can see the streaks going around the side. And he smiles at me. He looks at me in the eyes. And uh, I smile back. And he, uh, he reached up his, his arms to give me a hug, and he didn't have any hands. And uh, I couldn't move. I froze. And the boys they could kind of tell what was going on, so they went over there and hugged him and started talking to him and so on, but uh, I couldn't touch a single person in that room. I still feel like shit to this day because of that. But uh, like I said, I was a farmer, and it was as if I couldn't touch the fruit of my labor. And it's a very, I still have dreams about it and think about it all the time, so that's uh, the story I told Adam to, to set the stage for this song. Smile so
imagine a world with no need.